Well, and uh, again, you know, you, you're before the, the before the break. You're talking about how the government has become a third party in every transaction, and yet you you see people on well across the political spectrum calling for more and more government involvement. There ought to be a law for that. There ought, I mean, and you get people that are so upset about gay marriage, for instance. Yeah, did you see uh, Ann Coulter going after Ron Paul for his uh, debate comments last week? I heard about it. It was pretty brilliant. He he says, you know, uh, marriage is a, you know, it's a it's a sacred contract before two people and God, right? The state has no place in it. And so Ann Coulter immediately goes to, well, if the state's not involved in marriage, how can they regulate X, Y, and Z aspect of it? And, like, she totally misses the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Why is the state regulating two people, you know, and how they act? Uh, which uh, brings me to another another thing that the uh, religious right misses, which which I find hilarious. So there's all these laws against prostitution, right? And if we didn't have them, we'd obviously all be uh, we'd all be out either being prostitutes or buying prostitutes. Uh, but there's there's no laws against making pornography, right? So you can pay somebody to to have sex with with you or whatever as long as you videotape it. That's what essentially the the law says. But if you don't videotape it and sell it, then it's illegal. That's why they call uh, Hugh Hefner's um, all his playmates models rather than what they are, high-class prostitutes. Right, but it just goes, you know, the absurdity of the of the argument. But but yeah, anyway, the the whole thing after the debate, and then you had you had O'Reilly. Um, uh, Ron Paul was talking about you can't address deficit spending without um, without looking at the Keynesian uh, philosophy of the Federal Reserve. And O'Reilly's on. He's like, he can't even pronounce Keynes' name. He's like, who was this guy? You know, what? When did he live? You know, 500 years ago or something. And he just totally misses the point, right? Th- this philosophy, it's it's ideas that drive civilization. And he doesn't even understand, you know, he doesn't even understand the main economic idea that undermines Western civilization. Oh, today. I thought the main economic idea was capitalism, right? With right. government involvement. But, and, and, he, and he bags on this guy for knowing. You know who uh, who the economist whose ideas have have infiltrated society bags on him for knowing who that guy is, right? Knowledge of of history is to be scorned. So pretty well, unbelievable. Yeah, we won't repeat it if we know what happened. Uh, again, you know, you guys uh, just listening to you talk, I'm realizing from some of the things that I've read over the years, like the book 1984 or Brave New World, that in many ways we are living this. I mean, you look at you listen to the new speak that people use. And you listen to the way in, in, in which history has been rewritten so that it, only those of the, the correct political aspects are being allowed to be talked about. I, it's, it, it does. It makes me kind of nuts. You, it's pretty simple. All governments from all history follow the same pattern over and over again. And no one can argue this because history says that it's always the same. Every country goes from bondage to spiritual faith from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back into bondage. We're obviously at the dependence stage right now. Yeah, moving into bondage. Well, definitely, if nothing else, at the apathy stage, because nobody gives a crap about anything. Well, look at the dependence right now. Look at how many people cannot survive if they don't get their government check. Look at how many people get scorned for knowledge. Look at our whole presidential debate right now where the wonderful conservatives are so hell-bent to beat Obama, and uh, the whole thing around it is, well, if we get that guy in, he's going to pass the laws we want, which is basically saying we're going to force these people to do what we want them to do instead of let's get a guy in there that says we're done bothering you here's here's part of the problem though is that we've got we are surrounded by people on all sides right now who seem to be absolutely incapable of self-governance what i mean by that is you look at their the lack of self-control in their own personal affairs look at how many people are so deep in debt that they can't even afford to feed their families because they've got so much debt and they need the government help i mean you, in, in order to feed their families look at how many people these days are are incapable of controlling their urges and, and, and oh, that's, get themselves that's, into that's trouble. interesting. You know, that's a consequence of the nanny state removing yeah. the needed responsibility. That's some. You know, all these people call for more laws to make sure that we don't hurt each other. The laws actually end up removing the responsibility of 
from ourselves for our own actions, right? And so the laws create more crime, not just because they make people criminals, but because they, they lessen the actual the penalty, right? If there's a fixed penalty for a certain crime, then you make an economic decision on that crime, whether it's worth it or not, instead of a moral decision. All right. Can we go to the phones, gentlemen? 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, Carl. Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Hey, who is this? This is Al. Al, what's on your mind? What's on my mind? Uh, you know, I, I like your guys' history, but you ain't gone quite far enough back into history and, and quoting from uh, a different book, the Bible. And it started out there in the Garden of Eden where God created man and woman, and he created the Garden of Eden, and he said uh, he, gave, he granted them all the unlimited privileges they wanted. And he had one law, one regulation, one rule said you may not eat from the fruit of that tree and they violated it and then he made some more restrictions on them after that they lost some of their freedoms all right yeah i agree and so <laughs> and so you know you're almost in a circular argument laws and freedom have been existed since man's been on earth i don't mind god's laws i mean he can i mean there's a big difference between his laws and man's laws because god put basic restraints on us as far as our uh, interaction with other people, the government puts restraints on interaction of every single stinking thing you do with every single part of your life. All religions in the world agree on one thing, and all um, societies have always agreed on one thing. Do all you have agreed to do, and don't transgress on anyone else. Those two laws are the only things that should be considered a crime. Yeah, basically the two highest laws were love your God with all your heart and all your mind, all your soul, and do unto others as you have them do unto you. I mean, those are those are the two laws. And that's well, he basically had many, he had many other laws and, and commandments onto that. But but, but they he all... also said that you know you should you know you should you should obey your your employer, you should in, in obey your governments. Now we have the opportunity to change our governments, and that's what we do through elections in this country and through public process. And he grant and he told us to do all that too. God didn't say to obey your government; otherwise, the um, Israelites would have gotten in trouble for leaving Egypt. Well, and basically, another part way to look at it too is what is our government? I mean, I would say that our government is the Constitution of the United States. That's what we use to form what is now a federal, a centralized government, but more of if, a national government, really. These days, if we. Uh, want to say what our government is, our government is the piece of paper that was written down a couple hundred years ago, and that was based on a, biblical, uh, principles. biblical principles, the Magna Carta, all the way back to, I mean, it was a restraint, it was, it was a, sh a restraint on the government. It was, this is what your job is, don't go over th these bounds, and that's it. That's our government. Our government is not Obama and Congress and anyone that gets in there and wants to make a law against us. But n and neither was it George W. Bush. I mean, no. you know, we gotta, you got to keep in mind that you know, an awful lot of people are upset about the stuff happening right now under Obama, but it was the same stuff that was happening under Bush. Who gave us the Patriot Act? Who is the lawbreaker? Well, the, 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 uh, the basis of our problems is, is you got people in control that don't believe in the Bible and don't believe in the principles or the commandments or the direction the Bible teaches people to do things and how to act and that's why you that's where we're ending up to where we're at today well, I, I think that might be part of the problem Al uh, but I think that part of it also is that even people who don't believe the Bible I mean don't you think they should have an opportunity to learn from those who do why it is that they believe what the, what it is that they believe instead of being forced to that's one of one of the commandments I understand is that I should go out and profess. I should go out and and proclaim God's word and and tell them about the free gift of salvation, so that they'd be saved and their eyes would be open in their mind. They'd be a newborn person, and they would start understanding the Bible and its principles. It'd be good if uh, Christians did understand the Bible, and I mean Christians themselves would understand the Bible and the principles in it. You can't understand, you can't have, have that wisdom. You can have knowledge of the Bible. And there's lots of many of people out there that have lots of knowledge of the Bible, but they don't have wisdom. And it's because they weren't born again. They don't understand. They haven't accepted what Jesus Christ did on the cross. All right. Well, right, another problem a guy, is... A guy that understands that um, Jesus Christ hung on the cross for the redemption of the sins of the world still 
put into a political place of political power, he's still going to be faced with the same temptation to oppress the people. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what we had today, and it's under the guise of morals. Isn't the Republican Party essentially God's party? And look what they've given us. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what somebody claims. That's what some people say, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what is Christianity at this point in America? It, it's a claim. Yeah, and let me let me ask you, Alana, and based on your own personal experience, how many people do you know that claim to be Christians? Would you say, yeah, that person acts like Jesus? Well, none of us can. That's yeah. the, that's the whole point. None of us can act like Jesus because none of us are. And so this this illusion, uh, this I don't know what it is. It's it's hubris that we need to. Uh, implement God's government by electing Christians is absurd because, you know, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? None of us are perfect. So if any of us get into power and try to implement God's will through the use of force, we're making colossal hypocrites of ourselves, right? We're deifying the self. Yeah. Well, then, how are we going to save all the Muslims? Then? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Great Commission involved... Uh, um, assault rifles and bombs and all that stuff. Right? Isn't that what God said? Go and go and blow up all the non-believers so I can send them to hell. And give them democracy. Right, and give them democracy. Al, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Four five eight. Talk the numbers. See if we can squeeze in one more here before our break. Good morning. Are you Hello. Still? Hey, who is this? Charles. Charles, what's on your mind? Federalist thirty five and Henry David Thoreau. Uh, Federalist thirty five says, uh, I don't know the exact wording, that government is best which governs least. Henry David Thoreau in Civil Disobedience said, that government is best which governs not at all. And here, also, here. From, <laughs> also from Civil Disobedience, uh, the people must have some complicated machinery or other, and here it's din to satisfy that idea of government which they have. That idea of government. Uh, talk about newspeak, huh? <laughs> uh, if you get ideas of government, uh, that's uh, six billion. How many people are there on the on the planet, right? Yeah, closer to seven billion now. Well, and and the fact of nature again is that there are six billion governments, right? We all decide how we're going to act, re regardless of the laws on the books or a piece of paper. We decide what we're going to say, what we're going to do. Um, we're we're entirely self-determining, and there are negative incentives to that, which we call you know laws or oppressive or whatever, right? But we can still choose to do and say what we do. Well, even natural consequences right now, you look at how many natural consequences have been removed so that people do not feel any kind of uh, problem. Can you, uh, can you name the unforgivable sin? Uh, off the top of my head, no. What is it? Uh, Matthew 12, 29, 30, 31, it's, uh, 32. It's blasting the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's it. If a, if a commandment is forgivable, why is it a sin? Uh, I'll let you guys go. Happy weekend. Thanks for the call. You know, we go back to the Bible. The Bible told us exactly what rightful government is. It's to punish the wicked with the sword. End of story. It doesn't say anything else about it. It doesn't say and to tax and to push regulation and... On and on and on. Be Republican. Declare wars. Kill everyone. Says rightful government. The government's role is to punish the evildoer. That's why it wields the sword. And the evildoer is not anyone that's Ameri not American. Or <laughs> the evildoer is not someone that's just breaking a regulation that was put on them by whoever came along and decided to put the regulation on. It was specifically talking about our natural rights and liberties. You. Do something against this person. The government's rightful authority is to punish you for doing that. That's it. 